Kansas Garage. We're uh, going to be working on a 1967 Cougar this morning. Um, went down to the old O'Reilly's and got me a, a Super Start Extreme battery. We got a, oh, you can't even see that, 750 cold cranking amps. It's supposed to be for this car. We'll uh, just walk this on over. And it's gonna go on that side. Even more stuff. Uh, we're gonna get all this stuff over here and then take you through a little walk around of this car. So I bought this from a buddy of mine as it sits minus the Kragers, which were polished roughly 10 years ago. Um, this is how I got the car. It had the factory 16s with the hubcaps on it. And I think the interior wasn't maybe quite as rough it is, as it is now, but sitting in the sun for 10 years kind of does that, you know? So let's open this all up. And uh, these are all the extra parts I got. Anyway. Uh, oh yeah, previous owner was super nice about parking this car when he did. Uh, drained all the fuel out of it. And... I don't remember I think it had engine oil in it and trans oil but it was low because it has a slight leak go figure but it's got all of that stuff the uh, dash pads a little tore up but you know that's pretty typical the roof liners a little worse for wear probably take all that out um, factory steering wheel does have a C4 automatic in it and I put I bought these wheels off of somebody they had just polished them and I put brand new tires on even though my dad told me don't do it and I was like but I want them and so I picked them up well then it sat for years on end, and well, the tires are probably flat spotted, I would guess. If they're not, uh, they are super weather checked. They had, the one I checked was date coded 12. Oh, there's one right there. Yeah, so at least 10 years. Sitting on drums. I forgot I had locks for this. Interesting. Didn't know that. Um, I did steal the air shocks off that other Mustang that I was working on. Uh, technically he gave them to me because we put coils on and then the coils didn't work and so <laughs> we ended up putting air shocks back on his car. But, you know, that's kind of how everything goes. Um, yeah, so like I said, the previous owner sold this because his kids I guess weren't taking very good care of it hot rounding around or whatever and it was his wife's car and he wanted to see it to go to a good home and the first guy didn't want nothing to do with it but I did I love these I was looking for a muscle car and uh, Mustangs were super expensive and I got this stupid cheap. So, before I even thought about starting this channel, uh, I did a <laughs> old start on this. Fuel tank was empty, verified it, pulled the drain plug out, there was nothing in there. And double checked all my fluids, put gas in the tank, spun it over till it fired up and it fired right up oh no that's not good my p 
PVC is missing. That's not, oh, it's a plugged hole. Perfect, all right, that's good. Cause that would have been extremely bad. Um, as you can tell, this car is unmolested. I, yeah, <laughs> I'm about to change that. We are gonna do a ton of work. Oh, the battery tray's rusted, perfect. We're gonna do a ton of work to this thing. Uh, but first, we're gonna do a 10 year old start, cold start, no start thing, maybe. Under this here, flipped for the horsepowers deal, is uh, should be an old two barrel. Stinky little bitty carburetor. And ironically, when it was parked, it worked fabulously. I couldn't believe it. Actually, I'm gonna leave that on because uh, it's liable to have a whole bunch of stuff get thrown up into the engine this area. But uh, at least fill the bowls and disconnect our fuel line down there so we don't I mean I am gonna drain the fuel tank cuz uh, I know that stuff is at least 10 years old so <sighs> yeah Anywho, we're uh, gonna go ahead and get started on that check the old uh, throw that battery in there See how this works. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Well, it definitely don't fit the battery box, that's for sure. Or battery tray, I mean. But it'll fit fit. Let's see. I'm gonna set you guys down. See how this looks from over here. Let's check fluids first. nothing on the stick so that tells me that this thing's probably got an engine oil leak which is fine just means we gotta fix it Wowzer. that's a little rough uh, previous owner installed the uh, chrome will get you home stuff here I'm not a huge fan of those matter of fact I what I don't there's okay oh it's just for show that hole is plugged oh my goodness this is ridiculous okay maybe I am taking this off because I gotta be able to see everything underneath here okay the choke has been open on this so hopefully, uh, nothing terrible will happen. Oh no. <laughs> all of the electric choke screws are all backed out. I'm sure you can see that. That's all three of them are backed out there. Great. Perfect. Fine. Um, not great. Up, but I'm pretty sure I just broke the uh, accelerator pump gasket that's in there. So, you know, I don't need none of that right now. Yeah, we don't need that. Okay. So, we know engine oil is empty. Let's go ahead and check on the old coolant. Yep, that's low. Good thing I got that, because, you know, I already figured I was going to need it. Oh, hey. Looks as though 
that's full. I'm not even going to look at brake fluid because we are not worried about that right now. Because I'm pretty sure it's empty. <laughs> uh, that got chewed up by some mice because it used to be hooked to that. And that was my tack signal. So we're just going to go ahead and lift that wire off of there and not even do nothing with that. And those heater hoses are rock hard. Probably going to explode. That's perfect. Just fine. Um, <clears throat> these cougars are also known for uh, their pop-up headlight deals here. Problem is, all in there and right here and all of that shenanigans is all vacuum lines. And it operates both motors. Little vacuum pots down there and there. And uh, those are all just giant air leaks waiting to happen. Vacuum leaks, I should say. I see I'm missing my fan trout, which is great, but that's okay because, again, we're replacing this with an aluminium one. And yeah. Well, I'll put some coolant in it because, you know, it's cold out. Might as well. I'm sure I'll regret filling this with fresh coolant because I'll have to put it new stuff in the other radiator, but for now. And because I don't want to crack the block. Terribly low, at least so far. Mm, about two thirds of a gallon. <clears throat> not terrible, but not great. I'm put that right back in my place because I'm sure that'll hold all the pressures. I'm sure of it. some old diesel engine oil in here because it's got all the vitamins in it and minerals and you know, why not also I don't know how many miles are on this engine so you know a little bit of thicker oil can't hurt, right? And I happen to have a collection of oil. And I just got to use it. So we're just going to do that. Let's see. I wonder how low this is actually. I've got somewhere near about two quarts in here so far. I was thinking I was going to do a oil filter change, but uh, probably not. Since we're putting 
it's brand new oil in it. So I'll run it a little bit and then when I go to do the intake in here and change out the valve covers and maybe screw with the heads a little bit. I don't know. I do have some headers to put on and all that other good stuff, but still not on the stick. Oh, that's not good. something degrees out so 1540 isn't wanting to flow real nice right now but it'll be all right better than trying to put lucas in it right now because that stuff wouldn't flow for nothing at this point some point okay well I guess we're grabbing some more oil to put in this bad boy because we're not even on the stick yet that is crazy to me how are we not on the stick yet It must have drained all the oil out of it. That is ridiculous to me. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, so we're not quite at the ad mark. I guess that 1540 is just taking its sweet time to get down to the bottom. Well, my engine oil is kind of a pain to get to. So, I'm just going to add this because I had it laying around and why not? Zinc's always good in flat tappet engines. Why not? Oh my goodness. That is some interesting looking stuff right there. <laughs> Looks like some little thicker 1540 or even gear oil maybe that's some pretty pretty thick stuff we're just gonna let that sit in there and drain down in there and do its thing no it was just in here but you know oh that hose is rock hard oh yeah back on. I'm almost absolutely sure the <clears throat> transmission's empty. And just like that almost full. Perfect. Because <clears throat> I'm 
sure it'll be low by the time we get a crank on it. After getting oiled everywhere. some on the stick, just the tip of it, but there is some there. So, for early Ford automatics, Type F, it's the only type to use uh, for Ford. That's the uh, special blend of herbs and spices for the uh, before, previous to 1977, according to this. And some certain models, 1977 through 1980. High static friction fluid. Ooh. Anyway, that's uh, what the early Fords use in their transmissions. And so that's what we're going to put in. Because this is an early Ford product. And it has an automatic transmission. You know, logical. down in my funnel and turn it upside down so any extra that's in here gets caught up in the rack there so engine oil's good and topped off that's probably gonna fall apart which I'm glad I'm changing the valve covers out because goodness Disconnect the fuel line. Oh, that is high quality me craftsmanship. I don't know if you can see that down in there, but uh, that little filter, right? That little guy, that little guy right there. Let's see if we can get you down in there. See that? I didn't put a clamp on that. And I drove this quite a bit. had any issues or nothing but I drove it quite a bit like that so you know that's great and all I'm gonna try to disconnect this fuel line see if it'll come off 
so we don't pump whatever I put in the fuel tank out. Yep. I, as a young dumb kid, did not remember to drain the fuel tank. Go figure. Because, well, why would I? I was going to drive this thing. And then I didn't. And it sat for years. And well, you know how that goes. Now we're here. And we're working on it. brake booster too with my brake upgrade I have uh, disc brakes that I bought for this front and rear and uh, we are going to put a brake booster in so this thing will stop nicely oh no oh yeah that is that is varnish. Oh, I don't know if you can see that on my finger, but that is, whew, that is rough, boys. We should probably, I bet that carb is absolutely full of all of this yucky stuff. Dang it. Because I wasn't thinking any better. Is dry. That's great. Yeah, but I bet the fuel bowl was completely full and then sat because I didn't run it out of fuel because, well, it still had fuel in it. So, you know, good times. Did not get any spare fuel line, so I'm going to have to see if I can make something work or <laughs> have to make a trip to the parts store to get fuel line. Man, that stuff stinks. Should have been wearing gloves. Ugh. All right, we got a thing to dump that into because that was gross. Man, that was gross. Oh my goodness. Man, it smells up here right now. Whoo, that is another color of orange that. Boy, I have not seen in a long time. That is gross. <laughs> right, well, guess we'll get this all kind of halfway put back together. I gotta get a little screwdriver because I didn't cut. What I have here in this little jug is, I believe. Probably six month old 91, half mixed with, <laughs> I think, a splash of race gas and also some two stroke oil. Well, in my digging, I found some 3 8 transmission cooling on it. Well, this is definitely not right but it's gonna work because that's what we're gonna use we are gonna take this here and put the old straight bait in That's why 
I would bet. I would bet it's not hooked up. That's probably why. So with these older ones, I'm sure it's a vacuum port deal. And they'll close based on vacuum, I think. I don't know. I could be wrong. There is an electric version that runs power off of like the coil area. And as it warms up, it opens. But for right now... Take that and cinch those down so they don't go walking away. I'm gonna take this right back off. Uh, I know that the uh, fuel filter there is probably plugged, but at this point we're just gonna let it ride. Cause yeah, I'm going to. Hook my bump start deal to my starter solenoid. And should be that one. We oh excuse me. We're going to here where I can be in complete control we're gonna pump whatever nastiness was in that fuel pump out I'm gonna put a piece of hose on that filter put it down into that bucket and then try to suck fresh fuel up to here clean out the pump hopefully and get some fresh fuel in the carb and we'll see what happens see what happens no idea a whole lot can go wrong and probably will okay yeah you know what i'm gonna go get a hose clamp hopefully i have one big enough because i'm sure this is probably too big for that well that clamp's probably way too big but we'll make it work nope Maybe. Oh. Oh yeah, that is way too big. But it'll work. Man, that fuel stinks. I don't know if you guys have ever smelled old varnish gas, but golly, it smells the high heaven. Oh. That's great. I don't even have a clamp on the fuel pump. Perfect. Because what could go wrong there? Mmm, that smells delicious. connected down there off of that little itty bitty filter and it's going into a like one and a half gallon jug of some mixed fuel that I have sitting around it smells good so it's definitely got some premium in there I would imagine it's got a splash of race gas in it too just because this guy likes to get a little carried away with that sometimes so I have the fuel line disconnected I am not going to energize the coil. We're just going to disconnect that one because that will get 12 volts and power the coil. Um, yeah, let's not do that. We're going to spin this over after I connect the battery and make sure nothing catches on fire. Spin it over till I get something coming out of here, hopefully we're gonna see and once we get fuel coming out of there we can connect that connect my 
spark system there and then go turn the key on see if this thing will uh, bark to life hopefully it will hopefully the <laughs> mice haven't chewed through a whole bunch of wiring harness and uh, this thing won't catch itself on fire that's that's what we're hoping for at this point no promises the negative which is always what you want to not happen no sparky sparky no sparky sparky perfect all right that ground wire is looking mighty delicious Make sure nothing's in the fire. <clears throat> oh, yeah, this is like the smell of the uh, older cars inside. They don't smell that bad, I don't think. I like the smell of this one inside, anyway. <sighs> All right, well, let's. Give this a spin check, I guess. Spin, but I ain't got no fuel. So that's great. See if it'll start working again. I think that's what we're gonna do. We'll be right back. Yep, smells like old fuel still. Goodness, that stuff stinks. Alright. Let's give this some. sprayer stuff down in there. I did have carb clean. I guess I could have used that, but what's the fun in that? Brake clean super flammable on all these high quality lines here. Alright. Here we go. Like I'm making a run to the parts store. Okay, well, <clears throat> we're back from the old parts store. And it still smells like pretty nasty fuel over here. <clears throat> Good stuff. Oh, power steering pump, you're right in the way. if we 
can't get the fuel line off. I got new 3 8 fuel line, <coughs> new filter for the carburetor, new fuel pump, because, you know, I just want to go big. because I didn't even check to see if that was a thing. Fire extinguisher, huh? Nope, we live on the wild side. I like set stuff on fire. I guess. Because we don't play that game. <clears throat> you know, I was thinking about whether I'm just going to use any silicone or anything on there, but I think we're just going to let that thing ride. <clears throat> I gotta get down there and looking at it. Well, that's not good. Why is that not a. They made it metric. What in the world? Okay. I don't even know if you can see anything from down here, but we're gonna. Nope. Can't see nothing. Ugh. Okay. I'm gonna guess that you can see from there that we are about to make a mess. So I'm gonna take and slide. see anything or not but we're just gonna roll with it oh yeah okay that's a little bitty that's the half i'm pretty sure thank goodness flare wrench because that is just gonna strip of course if I can find it all right so we're gonna try to give this best possible chance for success there that fuel line feels solid I bet it swole up because this is probably not a good fuel line oh. Interesting. Leading up to the pump. Very interesting. For your viewing pleasure, 
They got us a, uh, they didn't have the wicks, but they had a micro guard, so that's what we're gonna use. Actually, we're gonna save that clamp. I got the old. Magic twisters. Oh, I bet those aren't even gonna fit. Dang it. Oh, they fit. Check that out. Got lucky. <clears throat> All right, so got some 3 8 fuel line. Put that on. Oh my gosh, I should have lubed that first. Hoi. Well, I'm gonna use the old W. Get some W sauce on there. Yeah. Okay, now then, we are going to rub and guesstimate how much hose we need. Now then, got this all put together. Before I go yanking that pump out, I'm gonna slide this back underneath there and see if this pump will pump fuel. If not, I bought a replacement pump. All right, let's try this again. Don't know if any of that brake clean's still down in there, but we're gonna spin this over and see if it was just a plugged line, because that thing was absolutely plugged. Can you see? You can't see. All right, well, we'll just keep you out of the fan, maybe. Give that a bump. <laughs> Nothing. All right. Guess we're doing a fuel pump too. Dang it. Kind of hoping we work, but you know, at this point. That's the good stuff. Okay. I guess we're gonna take this back off. And we'll put it on the new pump when we get the new pump in there. Maybe. Oh, okay, well, got her stuck, I guess. Hmm. Just looking at something that said they make pliers for this and I thought those would be kind of neat but who would need those Turns out, I guess I do I should have sprayed that but I was really hoping that was gonna work oh well maybe we'll just bring that whole assembly out with me now what did I do with Oh yes, flare wrench, and we are, oh no, that's not great, oh, that's not going to work out very nice at all, oh, oh goodness, it did, it actually did, I am so shocked, 
it actually loosened up. That is shocking. I thought for sure it wasn't going to work. Oh no. Oh. Oh, I got the I got the yucky on me. I think that's from the old uh, brake clean I ran down that line there. Trying to get some life out of it. Let's just I don't know what that's for. It must be some funnel. Probably the trans funnel, but that'll be alright. Uh, I wonder if a 13 is any tighter on there. Mm -hmm. No fit. Huh. How about that? On drip. Oh yeah, all that nastiness. Good stuff. It smells like brake clean. Sorry guys, this is kind of a awkward place to be when trying to. Oh no. I got the poo on me. I got the poo on me. Man, I sprayed a lot of stuff down in there. <laughs> oh well. I'm trying to get it to lubricate that pump, and it did not do any of that. Guess we're just gonna let it ride. Oh! Not great for your skin. Just letting you know. Should have put a glove on, but you know. Oh, Shoulda, coulda, woulda. I'm gonna smell like old, stinky old gas for a very long time. I can tell. And we are gonna see if we can't just sneak those out of there. <laughs> Check that out. That is high quality install right there. Yeah. That's what I was trying not to do. Oh, goodness. I don't think that fuel pump is that old, to be honest. gasket and all the silicone with it we're just gonna try to clean it up here and we're just gonna put a gasket on dry and see what that does probably gonna put some silicone on there but just a touch we don't need an excess like this other one was hey brake parts cleaner check that out perfect good enough for who it's for. Me. Okay, I'm gonna put you back up there, I think, maybe. 
something like that. We'll Alright, so we're going to take this, put a little bit of the old Motocraft silicone on there. Front and back, just a touch. And I'm going to stick it on the fuel pump, which is right. Cheer. I'm going to refer back to the old, I should be wearing gloves. So, doesn't need a ton, just a real thin coat just to take up any imperfections that may be in the block or on the fuel pump both sides except for where my fingers are just holding it on the outside you know I'm gonna get this everywhere obviously and then I'm gonna wipe the inside of this so my fuel rod doesn't get any on it because it doesn't need any on the fuel rod or the actuator rod or lever or whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> and we're just gonna slide that bad boy on there like that. That'll kind of hold it in place just a wee bit. Now if you had some gasket cinch you could use that I suppose but this works pretty good too. I'm also gonna use some of this and put on here where it rubs on the cam eccentric lobe, fuel pump eccentric on the camshaft, just so it's not metal on metal and has a little break in before the oil can get down to it. And again, don't need a bunch, just a little. Oh, this has been sitting for a minute. Okay, maybe I put a bunch on there. do know how long all of this takes until you're oh I don't know just shy of like three hours into just this and we're still just trying to get it started <laughs> Those are snug. 
unplugged. Just for a little extra insurance, I'm going to take put some anti seize on the fuel line. Put that on and the other fuel line. Under we go. Now then, just need a little bit. We'll put a little giant blob on there. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> Get started. There it goes. Okay, that ought to work around in there. And then, well, since I don't know what to do with my half inch wrench, we're going to use the line wrench again. Because, sure. Just need it snugged. And we're going to shoot that with a little. Uh oh, she dripping. And I'm gonna run this up here. Oh, that went right on there. Look at that. Why don't you just look at it? Okay. Maybe. You can tighten. You can do it. As transmission I know we're just temporary permanently so I can get the fuel tank flushed and cleaned and maybe replaced okay now we are gonna I bought a new filter so we're gonna do that as well but I just want some fresh fuel to come up out of there before I do anything else on a count of three. One, two, three, go. Well, I don't know how that got there, but that was... Interesting. Okay. Stay put. Definitely got it up to there. Perfect. Now we're gonna use a, uh, I believe this is a French style wrench. The Crissol T-Silent or something like that. Oh, that ain't even tight. Nice, I like that. Okie dokie. Oh yeah, that was a Wix. Perfect. Just for giggle's sake, we're gonna put a not Wix back in there because I'm a bad person. And all they had was the micro guard available. Oh dang, they even put Teflon tape on there. Hoo wee. Well, liberal coating of pipe dope. That goes in nicely. And then use the French wrench. Run her home. Uh, I don't know whose idea it was to put a coil right there, but it's right in the way. You know, 
Good times. That's probably good enough. I don't want to crank down too tight and then break that off in the carburetor because, you know, that's never great. And we're going to use our screwdriver and crank down on that. There you are. Not enough hands. Okay, now then. Fuel up to there. Uh-oh. I don't remember which one is which. I believe... This one was over here. I could be completely wrong, but that's what I'm going with. Okay, well, <clears throat> the accelerator pump is definitely shot because it's dripping fuel out of there. <clears throat> I don't have a spark tester to see if we're actually getting spark. screwdriver what am I doing all right let's try this again get over there I don't remember if I put a cap on this or if it was that way already I really don't remember honestly my points look pretty delicious But, oh yeah, that's a brand new cap. And rotor. Pretty sure. Bet I put the points in it. Or somebody did. Gap looks pretty good. Okay, well, I'm just gonna pretend like all that's okay. Oh no, I took a chip out of that cap. Really interesting. That's an old cap, I guess. <clears throat> well, let's, uh, let's put some keys in this thing and see if it'll fire up. <clears throat> I really should have robbed the old sport tester, but I didn't. I guess if the battery was hooked up, I would actually hear something. If it was on, go figure. And just for verification purposes, we're going to check it there if it spins on its own. <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to go with, I have these backwards.
as soon as I turn the key on. Let's try that again. almost just went. Can you believe that? That was it. Just ran on its own. <laughs> oh my goodness. Alright, here we go. One more time. running. That was way too easy. Way too easy. stuck on the old two barrel uh, which I figured and the accelerator pumps leaking so that's gonna drain that down and uh, yeah but it ran perfectly fine just like I remember super quiet that back apart and we are going to figure out either where we're building this two barrel or <sighs> I'm starting in down the rabbit hole of all the hot rod stuff I don't know yet. I really don't want to screw with that two barrel <clears throat> I do have a four barrel intake that a friend of mine gave me that was what I was going to put the injection on and just let it ride. <clears throat> but this could run on a two barrel. Isn't going to win any kind of speed contest, but it'll run. I don't know. <clears throat> anyway, it uh it started and I got to clean up get ready to get out of here so anyway i guess we'll uh see you guys next time thanks for tuning in